Hi, my name is Shreved. Um, I'm excited to have this home theater, and I'm looking forward to watching good movies with my family. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Youth Man. We are doing a home theater tour, pretty much a series of videos. We're doing 13 home theater tours in a short period of four days up here in Wisconsin and Illinois. And today, as you can see, I'm not in my home theater, but I'm in my friend Balu's home theater. And so today, Balu's gonna give us a complete tour of his dedicated theater room, which is absolutely gorgeous. And so Balu, would you just share with the audience your home theater, where you're at in the process, and maybe some of the, the thoughts behind the decisions that you made with your home theater? Hello guys, uh, my name is Balu. Uh, thanks for visiting my home theater today. I am going to be showing you around uh, my theater now and explaining what I've been doing for the past almost nine months. I'm going to start uh, the tour by giving you the dimensions of the room first. Uh, the room is uh, about 21 feet long by 15 feet wide and it has an eight foot ceiling. Uh, I, I do have like uh, two rows of seating, one on top of a nine inch platform. Um, now I can give you an idea about the screen behind me. Um, there is a lot uh, gone into it. So uh, basically the screen is uh, inspired from one of the Youthman videos and the screen is supported by three hinges on top and the material itself is acoustically transparent. I got the material from Carl's place and one of my friend helped me build the frame for it. Um, it's still a work in progress as you can see. I mean the outlet covers are not on yet and uh, uh, basically uh, it can lift up, it can be lifted up but it doesn't have anything to hold it. Right now I'm still working on it. I'm just gonna request a couple of my friends to help me to show that. As you can see behind the screen, um, I do have three JTR 215 RMs for the LCR channels. So currently I have a 5.1 um, set up in this theater room. So you already saw the LCR channels for the surrounds. I have uh, the Klipsch 5502 version 2. Uh, one of the reasons I got this particular model is because they match the configuration, the driver configuration to my LCRs with the, um, you know, MTM configuration, uh, the mid-range tweeter, mid-range. And the tweeter in this speaker is also movable. They can be adjusted to face whatever direction you want. Um, so I have them for the fourth and fifth channel. I'm gonna put the grill back on. And uh, moving to the rear surrounds, I currently don't have any, but I'm planning to add two rear surround speakers. And I have the other surround on the other side, obviously. As you can see, uh, the front side of the theater, um, I have the screen and speakers in the, in the center, and I have two cabinets on both sides. And as you can see in the bottom, I did uh, create a space for placing two subwoofers. On one side, I have one of my older subs, which is, a, which is an SVS PB12+. Plus. So my older sub, uh, it has a 12 inch driver with three ports. It's, it's about 15 years old, uh, but it, it is an amazing sub. It sounds really good. And on the rear, I recently purchased uh, the JTR RS2 subwoofer. Uh, this subwoofer is a monster. It has two 18 inch drivers in a sealed, you know, Baltic birch uh, construction with a 4,000 watt amplifier powering it. I'm excited to listen to it. Coming to the projector, right? Um, I currently have a, a very old BenQ W1070 3D projector. At some point um, in the future, I'm planning on upgrading it to a 4K regular or a 4K laser uh, projector. The color of the theater room for the walls and ceiling. Um, so I'm using software gray and the web gray combination for the pillars. Uh, the web gray is slightly darker shade off the software gray. Um, the reason I chose those two colors are they are almost color neutral. They don't reflect a lot of light from the projector. And uh, I am for the lighting, uh, I have like six um, sconce and six uh, in ceiling recess can lights. Um, apart from that, I have two lightings to light the speakers, which are behind the screen also. 
For the lighting switches, as you can see, it looks a little odd with black and white. I wanted to leave it at like that because at some point in future, I want to upgrade it uh, to the Lutron Cassetta um, so that I can control the uh, lighting in the, theater, in the theater room using Alexa or Google, uh, Google Home. Uh, I left it at black and white mainly to remind me so that I don't forget about it. <laughs> in the ceiling, um, I have some tracks installed. Um, they are basically crown molding um, with a gap behind them uh, for running accent lighting, accent LED lighting. And uh, with the electrical light, I added a couple of outlets on both sides so I can connect those LED lighting. So for seating, um, I'm planning to have two rows of seating, um, one on the floor, on the floor level, and the other one is gonna be on the riser. The riser is basically uh, nine inches from the floor. Uh, the reason I went with nine inches so that people sitting in the back row, um, you know, they don't get distracted by the heads of the people sitting in the front row. So the riser, uh, the side, as you can see the side of the riser, I made the um, length of the riser as seven foot um, for accommodating six foot of fully extended recliner with about one foot for uh, people to walk outside. Yeah, so uh, now you're probably wondering what, uh, what you're seeing. So that is basically a hole uh, in the ceiling where I'm planning on installing Atmos speakers. I have six of those wired up already. So coming to the equipments, uh, one of my friend, um, he made us this door. Uh, which is made of uh, speaker cloth um, installed on a wooden frame. So that way the remote signal passes through. Once you open it, I have uh, like the APC surge protector on top um, and an Oppo BDP-103 Blu-ray player, Arcam AV40 for the processor. And I have the Parasound A51 uh, powering my five current speakers that I have. So the shelving itself is made of all glass, except for the bottom one. Uh, bottom one had to be heavy to hold the, uh, the 90 pound Parasound amp, so it's on a wooden platform, but all others are glass shelves, tempered glass shelves. I have five of them for future expansion. So one of the future project is uh, to of course treat the room so that the sound comes out well. Um, now that I have all the speakers behind the screen, I have to still find the first reflection point, second reflection point and everything from the wall and ceiling uh, and install like acoustic panels on the wall. I uh, still uh, in the process of researching how to do that. So now we are behind the screen um, and uh, I have access to all the equipments from the back to just make the connections and you know, messing around a little easier. Uh, now it's a little messy, I have to still organize all the cables and everything. So as you can see, I have uh, pre-wired for six subwoofer locations. Uh, this is one of them where I have both the RCA and the XLR connected. And the third cable uh, is actually one of the channels, extra channels that I had wired up for one of the speakers. So for all the subwoofer positioning, um, as you can see, there is one on the side wall, one underneath here. Uh, there is one behind me, right below the screen. Probably I'm not gonna be using it before because of the size of the screen. And obviously to match that, I have one on here. And Perfect. again, one on this side. And of course the one at the back side of the room. So that, there goes the tour of my home theater. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you.